don't care who does it. I don't care how they do it. I just want the bat dead. Ladies and gentlemen, to talk about Batman from Warner Brother Games, Montreal, please welcome Eric Holmes. Hey guys, how's it going? <laughs> so I'm here to show you our behind the scenes demo currently happening behind closed doors at the Warner Brothers booth for Batman Arkham Origins. Um, and this isn't intimidating at all, presenting in front of this versus a room of 24 people. Um, so we're going to show you a playable demo. Um, it's going to show you a young, raw Batman, roughly about two years into his career. At this point in his career, Batman is something of an urban myth. He's not well understood by the establishment. The criminals aren't really sure if he exists, and the ones that do know he exists really regret meeting him. The police department regard him as an outlaw because a vigilante is illegal. He doesn't have any friends in the police department. Um, and uh, yeah, so we're going to showcase some new areas of the city. We're going to showcase a bunch of new features. Um, tonight, uh, the game is set on Christmas Eve. And tonight, the Black Mask, who's currently the biggest mobster in Gotham, he's the most powerful crime lord by far. He has the vastest resources. He has the largest gang, the best equipped guys. He has placed a bounty of 50 million dollars on the Batman's head, and he has brought eight of the greatest assassins, the most talented killers of the DC universe, to come here tonight for one night only to try and claim that prize on Batman's head. So with that said, we're going to jump into the playable, we're going to run a video, and uh, I'll jump in and highlight some features as we go. Bosses got the biggest assassins there is. Here in Gotham. All on the same night and all going after the same guy. He mad as hell. Wants the bat deader than dead. I ain't never seen black masks like this. I don't care who does it. I don't care how they do it. I just want the bat dead. Wake up. What the... What happened? Time to talk. Where's Black Mask? Let me go! If you insist. Playing our demo here. The gameplay in our demo here starts off in the South Island of uh, South Gotham. It's a larger, more majestic area of Arkham, sorry, of Gotham than you saw in Arkham City. It's taller, and the buildings have a lot of interconnections between them. So you can see a new movement style offered to Batman using his yes. grappling blade movement style. One of the things you're going to see in this demo is a lot more variety in terms of what's going on in the open world and what sort of options are available to Batman. One of the 
things you'll see here in the HUD in the top left is you'll start to see an analysis of how Batman has done in the fight. You'll see how you did, what sort of an enemy group that you fought, and what sort of experience points you got from it, and then you'll see how much closer you get to your next level up. So you're that much closer to your next upgrade. Another thing that you're gonna see here is the Crime in Progress HUD. The Crime in Progress is a new system of dynamic open world encounters that are spread all over Gotham and will randomly pop up as you're navigating across the world. Some of them represent the highest watermark in terms of combat difficulty you'll find in the world. Some of them you might not want to tackle because you're not good enough yet. So you go off and you'll grind the world. He's a, well, he's a new face for the Arkhamverse. We're showing him for the first time here at E3. And he represents a new system in the game too, known as the Most Wanted. There are other characters beyond just the assassins out for Batman tonight or out doing things in Gotham, advancing their own agendas. He's anti-corporate, he's anti-government, and he's kind of pro-Batman, which is a little bit weird. So he's reaching out to Batman as he's trying to destroy these different corporate and government institutions. And as a player, you can follow up with these most wanted campaigns at any point, follow up with him, take him down, and guess what? It gets you a unique upgrade every time you take one of these guys down, as well as a whole bunch of experience points. So it feeds into that being in the open world. Um, overall engagement with that open world and agency, choosing what you want to do, choosing what you want to get. The next thing we're going to see at the next encounter, as Batman follows up on these bombs, is another new enemy. So we brought another enemy into Arkham called the Martial Artist. And what this character does is he plays a similar uh, high skill fighting style, kind of like Batman, in that Batman can counter enemies and also strike them. Well, this guy can counter Batman and Batman can counter his counters. So we get a little bit of a rock, paper, scissors game going with these guys, which is a little bit deeper than the regular group fighting. And it shows just how skilled and how badass Batman is. should do it. So for the purposes of E3, we're going to follow on back on the main story, following up on Black Mask. But in the full game, the player can follow up at any point, continue to follow up the path to anarchy, follow the trail of evidence and story towards him, and take him down to get that upgrade. You can see here just how, how much taller our uh, South Gotham Island is and how much more majestic it is than the previous spaces you've seen in the other games. I think that's something that's really fun to navigate around. demo now is the new detective gameplay, the case file gameplay in Arkham Origins. What this is, is this is an expansion of the Batman detective experience. Batman could previously detect things and track evidence, but now he's going to use a system of sensors in the cowl and the supercomputing power of the Batcave, the Batcomputer back in the Batcave, and he's going to reconstruct the crimes in real time using the evidence that he finds. And that lets him track down who's behind each crime the and bring them to justice. Out of control. It's also a very cool, very Hollywood way of visualizing a crime, which we think is, is just a really fun thing to see. What caused him to lose control? So this is where we start to step into the interactive top. storytelling because the player can actually scrub through the scene. He can play it backwards, he can rewind it, and he can also start playing it forwards and looking for more evidence. He can pause it at any time.
neutralize the first point of impact from here. The helicopter's tail rotor was severed when the fuselage hit the building. I should review the crime scene and find that tail rotor. So here he is, he's scrubbing back through here again. And he's coming back to that point of contact with whatever it was that damaged the helicopter. And he's gonna follow the tail boom through the simulation to find where the real tail boom is. crashed when a high-powered round shattered the tail rotor. The ballistics analysis will lead me to the shooter's position. So here he is, he's going to rewind the whole helicopter back together. Now he's found the different pieces of it. And he's going to find out where that bullet came from, the bullet that shattered the tail of the helicopter. Storytelling and interactivity. It's kind of like peanut butter and chocolate. This doesn't add up. This man's a member of SWAT. So why'd he fire on a police helicopter? This man didn't fire at the helicopter. He was aiming at me. The ballistics trace indicates this officer was killed by a ricochet from the same round that took down the chopper. There's only one person capable of a shot like this. Deadshot. The trajectory analysis will lead me to Deadshot's firing position, but that'll have to wait. I need to get to the Gotham Royal and find Black Mask. So once again, in the full game, the player could choose to follow up on Deadshot and head out find a number of other pieces of evidence, crime scenes, track him down and confront him for another unique upgrade with him too. But what instead we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the Royal Hotel where Black Mask is hiding out. The thing we're gonna showcase in here is a new gadget. The new gadget's called the Remote Claw. Batman's gonna shoot a projectile that fires out and grabs onto an enemy and then launches another claw out from that and then pulls the two things together. So we can use that to create navigation opportunities he can use that to take down enemies, he can use that to launch objects or enemies at each other. It's a really fun gadget for an open world game. Overpowered version of the gadget we've made for E3 just to demo it. We want to make sure that you guys can see every way you could use it. to drop in and just in time he's my parasol <laughs> remember you gave your word you have 
one minute. Do they even have manners where he comes from? <laughs> you see, it's a tradition in my house to open one present each on Christmas Eve. Hmm. How about this one? Did you just take it? None! I think? That was just a little stocking stuffer. A construction site blocking my view. <laughs> but this one isn't. <laughs> So thanks for being here for that first look at uh, Batman Arkham Origins. We think we have a really important story to tell for Batman. This is the coming together of a lot of characters that make his world. It's a very, it's a pivotal story for him. We have new gadgets, we have new enemies, we have a whole bunch of new things happening in the open world. And what's most important is that fantastic new story, which I wish I could tell you more about, but I'm kind of limited because I don't want to ruin it for you guys. Um, there'll be more information coming out as we approach our launch date, which is October 25th. Uh, there's also Blackman Arkham uh, Origins Blackgate, which is a game on the PS Vita, which I believe is playable here in the Sony booth too. So please check that out or come by and see us at the Warner booth too. Thanks very much. He's a hero. Luckily, there ain't a problem in the world that can't be solved with a little bit of money. Tonight, we all win. One of you walks away with $50 million. And the rest, well, we get rid of the bad man. Where's Black Mask? Let me go! If you insist. of you to drop in. <laughs> hey guys, I'm here with Eric from the Arkham Origins team. Welcome, sir. Thanks for having me. Who is the voice of Batman? The voice of Batman in Batman Arkham Origins is Roger Craig Smith. Okay. We went through an exhaustive casting process and we really want to find someone who represented that young, angry, raw Batman that we've been mm -hmm. trying to capture with this game. And uh, we landed on Roger Craig Smith. He's a fantastic voice actor. He, uh, he really does sound in the trailer like a younger Conroy. That's right. He and that's, really does. That was part of what we were aiming for. We really want to be authentic with this game and we want to tell an important Batman story. And I think having characters that sound like they are linked to the characters in the other yeah. game is a very important part of that. So that, that was part of, I think, how we ended up landing on Roger. He, could, he really nailed that. And then the Joker is, uh, is the, Troy Baker, The Joker right? is fan favorite Troy Baker, who's yeah. just exploding this year as the lead in The Last he's of huge. Us and the lead in Bioshock Infinite. Oh, he's fantastic. He's good, man. He's good. He's and great. once again, he's channeling that Hamill energy, and I Absolutely. love it. Absolutely. I mean, these guys respect the hell out of what those the other voice actors brought to the, the roles. Mark Hamill really defined the Joker when he, when he took him on for the Batman animated series, and Troy is as huge a fan as any of us. This is kind of like, the, the voice actor thing is kind of a, a good metaphor for you guys, too, because you're coming into Arkham Origins. That's right. And you, this is your first time developing an Arkham game. You're kind of taking over a franchise where people looked at it and they were like, Rocksteady got a superhero game right, mm -hmm. this is it. Was it a little daunting to come in after oh, that? Oh, absolutely. I mean, 
you won't find bigger fans of those games than the people on our team. We respect the hell out of those games and, and what that team in particular did with them. So our challenge was always to develop features, to make a story, to make characters and encounters that are worthy of joining those other games on the shelf. And that, that's what we've, the quality bar we've held ourselves to. And I mean, let's talk about gameplay too, because uh, the combat system, all, all the systems in the Arkham series are so good. When you come in with a fresh set of eyes, what do you keep the same, what do you change? Well, there's a core. There's a core to those things. There's a core to the timing of how Batman plays and feels, be it in a predator encounter or a fight. And um, I think that the strategy for us has always been finding ways to add on top of that, not ways to rip out the guts and yeah. start again, because there's a really solid core there. And there's, there's not really any value to be had from trying to reimagine something as fantastic as that. But finding new ways to bring other enemies to challenge Batman or giving Batman new abilities which enhance that uh, simply make for a, for a great experience. So we've, we've shown a couple of those enemies here at E3. Yeah, yeah, so let's talk about there. There's the, there are these heavies that are really hard to take yep. down. There are martial artists that uh, can counter your counters. What other kind of new enemies are we gonna be seeing? Oh, you're gonna see more, but I can't tell you more than that today. This Fair is, enough. This is our first public outing here at E3. This is the first chance for people to see the gameplay. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we're not showing everything today, but we're, I think we're showing a pretty dense barrage of new features for Batman, for enemies, for open sure. world, and a whole bunch of story surprises too. Well, let's talk some more about the new stuff. Let's talk about this enhanced detective mode. You know, previously mm -hmm. in detective mode, it was very much like, throw the visor on and let's find what we need to find. Right. You guys have added, uh, a video component to this thing, well, a crime scene component. Sure. Let's not undersell what Rocksteady did, though. They, they definitely had a bunch of detective stuff that made it feel like you were Batman, you were mm -hmm. tracking down, you were following trails, yeah. you were analyzing things to follow directions. But the thing that, that we, we've tried to add to that is to, to bring in more of a question of mystery to them, more of a sense rather than I have to find, I have to follow a trail, which was predominantly how it was realized before, is more like, what happened here? Yeah. Ask you a question and have you start to figure it out at the same time you're finding this evidence and you're seeing these really lush visual uh, reconstructions as the yeah. back computer is synthesizing <laughs> based on the evidence that you found, what what actually took place. So um, we have a number of these in the game. Some are small, yeah. some are small and simple. Some are, this is a large epic one that you saw here at E3. Some of them are deeply mysterious. I would imagine that some of them are connected. You don't find out things about certain crimes for a very long time. I, I don't. I don't want to ruin anything sure. because, because I think if you if I told you too yeah. much about them, when you got to them in the game, you wouldn't have fun with them. Gotcha. But I think the the essence of what happened here and trying to figure it out and getting an aha moment mm -hmm. in there is is very powerful. And that, that's yeah. I think that's the core of what's been added to the detective experience with that there. Getting a, I think it's this. Oh my God, it's not that. It's this. Yeah. And, and, and then the rush you get as the ideas start to connect. And I think that's especially cool when you consider our. Um, our prequel setting too because we have characters who in many cases aren't fully who they will eventually become yeah and so trying to get to guess who might be in the game and who might be behind something and how it might connect with who they will later become i think is a really it's, it's a really clear collection of of lenses focusing yeah. at one point to make for a really satisfying experience yeah and you're bringing in a lot of new characters too and you know one thing that i've always loved about the arkham games is different villains bring different gameplay and different mission right, types right. to the mix. And we've seen Deathstroke, we've seen Deadshot, we know that the Penguin is back in there. Mm -hmm. What kind of gameplay do these new villains bring to the game? What happens when you go up against Deathstroke? Well, Deathstroke, oh, what can I say? I don't think we've shown that boss game yet, so mm -hmm. I don't think I can actually explain what okay. that is. I think that's a little bit, we're gonna keep that under wraps till we show that for real, but you're, uh, I will tell you that you're right. Each one of these guys is built around an idea, uh, tying to the core game mechanics. And one thing, one thing I will say for for our boss games is that I think our t our team fell in love with what Mr. Freeze did in Arkham City. Yes. The Mr. Freeze boss fight was fantastic, and it, it, I think the reason it was so strong was because there was the core stealth mechanics of the game. Mm -hmm. You've been lurking, you've been hiding, you've been going into corner cover, you've been going into shafts or doing glide kicks, and. Maybe you were paying attention to some of those things. Yeah. Maybe you've learned a few of those tricks. And then when you go up against Mr. Freeze, you have to use all of them. And it's the exam that you maybe you've been studying for a little bit along the way. And then, you know, I, 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 I test myself as to how engaged I am in a gameplay experience with so my palms get sweaty. <laughs> right? And my palms got super sweaty, Mr. Freeze, because he was, he was making me really, oh God, 
What, what, yeah. what did I learn? How do I use this? Oh, oh. And, if you can fake yourself really out with that and you made the game, that definitely says something. Well, well that was Arkham City. That was that, Arkham, that, that was Arkham no, City. No, I'm saying games. in these new ones. Sure, well, well, that's the philosophy we yeah. try to embrace. So our boss games will principally be around core mechanics mm. realized with that boss as kind of an exam around those mechanics. Very and cool. so um, I think you'll see more of that Mr. Free spirit through all of our bosses. That's great. Uh, we're also getting some new toys. I know some of this detective mode takes place in the Batcave. What are we um, What are we doing in a Batcave? Like, well, the Bat computer is back at the Batcave. We actually haven't made any announcements about the Batcave. Okay. Yet, so, who knows? I mean, maybe maybe there'll maybe be something there. Well, well, we do know there's a Bat Wing. We've seen a Bat Wing. We do. There's a Bat Wing. The Bat Wing is a fast travel system. Okay. Whereby we can um, travel to various shortcut points around Gotham, mm -hmm. and there's actually a gameplay around a hacker which has not been named who is taking control of these various radio towers across the city, which doesn't allow the Batwing to go near them because okay. its systems get jammed. So there's a there's a game system connecting, taking over those towers, reverting them back to their original state, switching off this jamming signal, and now you can fast travel through that location. Very cool. So you have territory ownership, you have a sense of progression. Almost a similar of, to, a, to a Far Cry 3 radio tower it's, thing. It's eerie bit. that they actually had that in that game, because if you know anything about game development schedules, you'll know, you'll know there's no way we could have added that yeah, after yeah, we yeah. did that game. But it's funny that it turned up in there too. It's, it's, there's a little bit of a similarity. So something else I want to know is uh, a kind of a hallmark of the Arkham series is, has been other playable characters, whether it's in challenge missions or like we saw with Catwoman, an entire campaign. Are we going to see the return of alternate characters and challenges? Are we going to see an alt character campaign? Well, there's already been one announced. Mm -hmm. And if you pre-order the game now, you get Deathstroke as a playable character. Cool. And he'll be playable through a series of challenges. Um, we have not made any announcements regarding anyone else, but uh, who knows? There's It's a long time until October 25th, and we haven't announced everything for this game yet. Sure. So let's talk about the size of Gotham City now. Mm -hmm. Arkham City was huge. How big is Gotham now? Um, the Gotham that we see in Arkham Origins is roughly twice that size. Okay. Um, we're going to see whole new territories. We're going to see um, also one of my favorite things about the game is um, we wanted to bring a different mood to our world. Mm -hmm. And um, obviously, Arkham City is a prison, and we're not a prison. Yeah. But um, one of the things which I'm most happy about that is our game takes place on Christmas Eve. Yeah. So we get this wonderful warm idea. You know, you think of your family, yeah. you think of your folks, you think of gifts, you think of turkey, and like it's a nice thing. Traditionally, Music. a very bad time to be Batman, though. Right. Well, <laughs> Christmas Eve, yeah. you have this set in Gotham. Now you have this warm idea mm -hmm. set against this incredibly um, black lung of a place, this dark corner, which is Gotham, right? It's yeah. the worst place in the world on the happiest night of the year. So you have this really interesting contrast, which, which isn't, it's kind of darkly funny, but it's not against the theme. It doesn't rob the theme. In fact, it gives I think me it like, a, like a theme. Batman Returns vibe, right? Like well, it yeah. kind of, I mean, obviously you're not going as campy as Batman Returns, no. but visually, I well, love the, that idea. There have been many classic Batman stories told on Christmas, uh, Christmas Eve before, and, um, we're really happy to be bringing it to video games. That's awesome. So but not let's, Batman Returns. Huh? <laughs> but not like Batman Returns. But not Returns. like Batman Returns. So uh, you guys also announced some stuff that's exclusive to PlayStation as well. That's right. What, what do we get as, as PlayStation players when we pick up Arkham Origins? So for the PlayStation, there will be two exclusives. One of them, sorry, there is one exclusive with two skins, I believe. Gotcha. The two skins are, there's the Azrael Batman, which Very is cool. uh, also shorthand known by fans as Azbat. So it's an armored version of Batman, which is associated with uh, a, a very pivotal story in Batman. Yeah, the Jean-Paul Valley Nightfall. Exactly. Like, yeah. So that's the, the Nightfall storyline where he went up against Bane. Mm -hmm. And there will be a number of challenge maps associated with that, which feature going up against Bane's gang. That's so cool. Which, that's uh, so, so cool. So we're working really hard to realize a, a version of it which is appropriate for that character. Another uh, exclusive, which I think will be a big hit with fans, is the 1960s Batman skin. Yes. So it's the Adam West costume as worn by our Batman, uh, which looks way more badass than it has any right to do, and I think fans will love that. That's awesome, man. Well, Eric, thank you so much for coming by, talking Batman. Thanks for this having me. This thing looks so awesome. I could talk Batman all day, but I guess I have to go now. <laughs> <laughs> coming up a bit later, we have Hohokam, but first, let's take a look at the trailer for Splice. Thank you. 